season. Hernady again, an outstanding free throw shooter at 80 percent. And now he's three for three in this game for all three of his points. You know, a lot of people think that motion offense is easy, but it's so difficult because not only do you have to understand how to set screens, but you must understand how to come off. And for a player like Shea Seals, he must do so many things well as far as reading the screens and also so unselfish. That time, everyone looking for him to take the shot, he's looking for his teammates. This guy had 14 rebounds in one game against Oklahoma. So he can do more than just get in there and smash people around. Hernani with the two free throws and gives Tulsa an 11 point lead again. Now, what's the best way to spend early March? In St. Louis at the Keel Center with Arch Madness. This thing is going to be an outstanding event. March 2nd, 3rd, and 4th. You see the number at the bottom of your screen to call 1 800 916 0041. Cannot wait. It's going to be a blast. Now a trap set and a pushing foul on Hernani, fouling Anthony Parker. Ed Schumer has written the traffic ticket on Hernani, his second of the game. 17 fouls. That means Bradley goes to the first bonus. Tulsa shows 2-2-1, two, two, three-quarter court pressure. The double team's going to come as soon as you cross half court. So you know what that means? Anthony Parker must understand that before he comes over half court. That time he comes over half court, picks up the ball. The worst possible thing you can do. He got lucky drawing the foul. I think I just saw that the other way. Bradley was trying to do the same thing to Tulsa, weren't they? Yes. You know, you know it's coming, so what you need to do is move up to that half-court line. When you see the trap coming, back it up, but do not come across and pick up your dribble because it's almost like a triple team, basically. Michael Ruffin back in for Tulsa. Anthony Parker, how about his last four games? 24 against Tulsa in the first meeting. 24 against SMS. 23 against Northern Iowa. 24 against Wichita State. This is that free throw, and Tulsa leads by 10. When he signed with the Bradley Braves, that signaled the rebirth of the Bradley program. I mean, Deion Jackson is great, no doubt, a very important player. But when you talk about this guy, Anthony Parker, you're talking about one of the premier players, premier talents in the land. Poindexter not able to take the pass from Thompson. It's a turnover for TU. And Bradley has it back, trailing by 10. It's 6.18 remaining of the half. There's the turnovers. Bradley with eight. Seven are all, all, all of those turnovers are steals by Tulsa. Well, the Hurricanes turned it over three times. Zobrist against Thompson. Not able to get the roll. Tulsa back in a hurry. Love. He leaves it short on the baseline. And the... Braves get it in the hands of Adebayo Akinkala. Parker in the open floor having some problems against two Hurricanes. Now he double dribbles with the basketball. Great defense by Tulsa. And Tulsa has Bradley rattled out here, Mitch. The last three or four possessions, they're just not in sync. Zobris with the very quick shot. Last possession, that time Parker just didn't have his head about him. Just had to call him out to long game out there. You're not going to get this deficit completed in one or two possessions. You have to stay patient. Tom am impressed. Is now a swat by Jackson for the Bradley Braves. You can see Jim Molinari having a nice discussion with Willie Sanchez. I'm sure about Arch Madness in St. Louis. Oh, I tell you, I Willie, got your wait. tickets? Oh, I've been to every one. Heck, I've even played in the Valley Postseason Tournament. I love it. It is a great event. The city of St. Louis and the conference office, they both do a tremendous job. And it's just been really fun watching the growth. And Mitch, we're both getting there Thursday. We're going to enjoy that whole weekend. Didn't you see Molina, though, asking Willie Sanchez if he had a hotel reservation? <laughs> you know, the impressive thing about Bradley is they've played good defense. You mentioned they've been bothered by Tulsa, but they've been bothered on the offensive end. It has not affected their defense. One second on the shot clock, seals for three from about 22, and it's no good. Great defensive possession there for Bradley and a tremendous box out. Three guys moving Tulsa players out of the lane. Parker for three. It's too long. Now a battle for the loose ball to Ken Calais. Cannot chase it down, and the ball goes back to Tulsa. Well, Mitch, how you're going to get back into this ball game? you're only down by a 10 spot, is you're going to get it back defensively by turning it up and not allowing Tulsa anything easy. And I thought you brought up a great point there. They have been able to sustain their defensive intensity. They have not panicked in this game. And Jim Molinari said the other night, at the Thursday night against Wichita State, he felt there was a little bit of panic mm -hmm. in the Braves and losing that ball game to Scott Thompson. Shot. Well, so far in this ball game, what has hurt Bradley? Steals and transition basketball in the half court. I don't think Tulsa has really hurt him that badly. Love will crank it over Zobrist and get it to go down. It's the first three-point make of the game for either team. And for Cordell Love, it is his 53rd trip. 
handful of the season. Seven points for Love, and now it is a 13-point lead, and now a timeout has been called by Billy Wright of Bradley, who wants a 20, but Bradley's already called the 20 this half. So Bradley does not have another 20-second timeout. This will be a full timeout, and Tulsa leads by 13. It's hard to think of something more important to a kid than their bike. That's why State Farm, along with the help of the good neighbor. Convention Center in Tulsa, Mitch Holtis, along with Tom Kosich. Bradley has not had a back-to-back -back score in this game yet. They trail by 13. And this is a great sign for Tulsa because when Cordell Love gets hot, he can flat out fill it up. A streaky shooter still concentrating, trying to adjust to coming off the bench. He started 17 games this year, but Mitch, look out. As soon as he knocks one down, it can get awfully hot. Yeah, Love has had six threes in one game this year. To vote for your all-time favorite Missouri Valley Conference players call the AT&T Hall of Fame number for the Missouri Valley Conference AT&T Hall of Fame 1-900-4204-MVC 1-900-4204-MVC you notice Brad, uh, Bradley probing the baseline against that 1-3-1 one, one. you need to pound it in and get the zone to adjust and then kick it back out make that zone adjust two seconds on the shot clock Parker finds a kin tonight it's going to be a shot clock violation Tulsa outstanding defensive stand there. All 35 seconds were used up by Bradley without a shot. But they're so long and so quick that they're out each and every passing lane, which really cuts down the side of the floor for the Bradley Braves. They do such a good job of anticipating passes. Tulsa may be playing the best basketball in the Missouri Valley Conference right now. Seals back door and banks it in. Shea Seals has four points, and now Tulsa's exploded to a 15-point advantage. It's kind of like deja vu all over again, though, isn't it? First meeting, Tulsa got out early also. And underneath, Punch is pulling his way inside against Seals. Six points for Dwayne Punches as he books a bucket, and he'll go to the line. One of the problems of the 1-3-1 is you get some small guy perhaps underneath in a bad matchup. That's what happens here. Seals is against Punches. And that's what I've been talking about throughout this first half, getting that zone to adjust, pounding it inside to the workhouse Punches. First foul on Seals, 18 fouls now on the Golden Hurricane. In any zone, there's gaps. The thing is, you have to explore and find them and then take advantage of them. 30-17 lead, you see. Tulsa with the ball. Now they try to lob him all and they overthrow it to him. Fourth turnover on Tulsa. One thing to just put back in your billfold or your purse in this game to remember is that Bradley has called already two full timeouts and a 20 this half. Meaning for the game, they only have one second half 20 and one full timeout left. Great point. In the turnovers, Bradley in double digits there. Also with four infractions. Nice block inside. Ruffin and Maldonado. That, that stuff's not going to go in the land of the Giants down there. It's going to get tossed out every time. Ruffin. This is the banker. And Parker picks up the trash for Bradley. Bray's trying to sneak back in it. They're going to give Bradley a, a, a driving angle. The reverse missed by Parker. Punches can't get the follow. And Ruffin with the board for Tulsa. Was that a pretty move, though, huh? How about this three by Seals that rattles away? And a foul on the board. It's going to be on Tulsa. Well, that's too bad. Parker taking it coast to coast with a great-looking move. Now, here comes Tulsa. On transition, Seals squared set. He's going to knock that down if he gets good looks like that. On the season, shooting better than 33%, which equates better than 50% from inside the arc. Right on the bucket, just couldn't get it to fall. Foul was on Rafael Maldonado over the back of Adebayo Akinkele, and Akinkele showing signs of fatigue. He has been tugging on those shorts all the way down to the other end to try to shoot these free throws. They just played Thursday night, traveled yesterday. And the guy with Nigerian heritage showing some signs of fatigue, and this is the front end of a one and one Tulsa, you know, they had a big trip to Europe in the offseason that Steve Robinson is really crediting as being one of the key ingredients for this season. Well, how about coming in as a new coach, not knowing any of your personnel, and, and basically getting half a season by being able to practice here and then going over to Europe to learn about your golf club. Plus, you're able to 
instill your system before October 15th. I think that's just a huge plus. Hernady lifts another putt. It's a bogey for Hernady, and at the other end, here comes Bradley, and a Kinkale slides one home. I think he shows flashes of brilliance. 18.6 rebounds earlier this year against the Blue Jays, but he just has not been able to put a consistent effort together. Hernady with a birdie putt from 16 feet. He has six points. And now another bucket for Tulsa. They lead 32 to 19. Prior to that, Tom, it was the first back-to-back -back bucket in this game for Bradley. Ken Kale gets fouled on the shot by Hernady. Third foul on Hernady. It's the double bonus now for Bradley. You know, you sense a little frustration seeing Frank Steve Hernady Robinson in front of our uh, our position right here, and really because it's a 13-point ball game, and if you didn't keep score of this game, you would think that Tulsa would be up easy by 20. They just have been able to convert on so many opportunities, and when you allow a team to stay close as good as Bradley, that's not a good thing to do. Bradley's defense has been good, but they have turned it over 10 times. I think eight steals for Tulsa in the first half, and yet Bradley hanging around. What a kinkle now. I mean, Jim Molinari telling us yesterday any offense he gives this ball club is a bonus. And he's looking like he's ready to play here this afternoon. Yeah, he's been a bonus the last few minutes. Played high school ball in Chicago. His parents were from Nigeria, but uh, he uh, has been in the States. Big game tomorrow. The Auburn Lady Tigers will be at the Lady Volunteers of Tennessee as Pat Head Summit team continues on in the great SEC. Maybe the best conference for women's basketball in the country. Ray Poindexter trailing. Boy, that's, that's a staple of the North Carolina system there. Those secondary break with the four or five man trailing and hitting that 12 foot jumper. Ben Coupette with the give and go from Parker. And Coupette has his first points of the day. 34-23, it's an 11-point lead now for Tulsa. You've got to be cognizant of that trailing 4-5 man on a secondary break. You can't allow them to lull you to sleep. Thompson penetrates. This is offensive. Rod Thompson crashing in. Two to Wayne Funches. Let's take a look at it. Let's see where Rod's head is here, Mitch. Puts it down on the deck. Yeah, oh, he lost his feet. Bunch is doing a tremendous job of anticipating. As soon as Rod left his feet, it was over. What makes this more important is that it was a non-player control foul, meaning Thompson committed the foul without the ball, meaning Bradley gets free throws. But in addition, they're in the double bonus, so instead of one and one, Tom, it's a two-shot foul for Bunch. the role. You know what? It's funny, but their first meeting a couple of weeks ago in Peoria right here on Prime what? Network, Brad, uh, Tulsa got off to that huge first half lead. were unable to really apply the knockout blow. Same tendency shown here in this ball game. Funches gets the roll twice. Magnetized rim for Dwayne Funches. Eight points. The average is 11 per game. Well, Jim Molinari is not happy. They were on to get Deion Jackson into the ball game that time. Just unable to get him in there. Nice penetration to get Ruffin a chance at the ring, and he gets fouled by Funches. Once again, Tom, Tulsa able to break down Bradley on the dribble. As Ruffin getting the look at the cup, as Dwayne Bonner with a nice dribble penetration. You see right now the two head coaches discussing at the scorer's table. Jim Molinari wanted to get in one of his players on that last break after the made free throw. They did not buzz him in. and Obviously Jim, rightfully so, a little bit upset about not getting his player in. And the clock wasn't moving. That yeah. probably had Steve Robinson concerned. But it has been worked out possibly. Ed Schumer is still talking to the scores table here, here. All this is going on with a nine-point lead for Tulsa with 102 remaining in the first half. And now Willie Sanchez joins the conversation. As Schumer and Willie Sanchez chatting. They're gonna take some time off the clock because the clock did not start. Evidently, and they're going to count it down to 58 seconds. So they've taken four seconds off the clock. 
Now you have to be careful out there. Funches, for one, has to be very careful. He has a second foul, one minute to go in this half. You do not want to pick up the silly third foul there with just a minute to go. Ruffin with the free throw down. He has four points, and all of those have been at the foul strike. He's four of five at the line in the first half. Tulsa led by 15 at one point. At 30 to 15, at 353 remaining in the half, they lead by 10 now. Make that 11. Tulsa back into the 1 3 1 extended zone. Shot clock and game clock at about a 20 second differential. 45 seconds remain in the first half on the game clock, and now Ruffin is found. Well, I'll tell you what, though, Anthony Parker really got away with a pass that time. Michael Left Ruffin his feet without really knowing who he was going to. Completed the pass to Billy Wright, but Ruffin about a split second slow from stealing that one and going coast to coast for the slam. Steve Robinson's got to be concerned. 12 fouls now on the Tulsa Golden Hurricane. Dwayne Funches is 4 of 5 at the line. Adibayo Kinkale is 2 for 3, 1 for 2 for Anthony Parker. This is Billy Wright. His first toss at the foul stripe for the ball game is down. How about Billy Wright? Top five all time as Kerry Burrell checking in. Billy Wright is top five all time in Missouri Valley Conference history, history in both steals and assists. Well, how about this? With all the great guards that have gone through the hilltop at Bradley, he's the only player in Bradley history with 500 assists and 200 steals. I mean, you've had some great names just over the last 15 years. The Jim Les, the Anthony Manuel, the Hershey, Hershey Hawkins. Hawkins. I mean, there's so many great players, and he's going to go down as one of the all-time greats. Shot clock is shut off or should be shut off. 20-second timeout. 20-second timeout has been called by Steve Robinson. Now the shot clock is still in play here because it's at 17 seconds while the game clock is at 27 seconds. Now let's, we talked with Steve Robinson before the game. We asked him about the importance of his team going overseas in the offseason. And he has felt like it's big. Well, I think it helped. If it didn't help the players, it helped me a tremendous amount because, you know, it gave me a chance to experiment and see how things would work. And, you know, nobody knew because we were way away. So uh, being across the water. So, uh, you know, heck, the, the guys that we were playing against didn't know who we were or what we were. And uh, uh, it was good. To, it was a male bonding experience with our kids because uh, I got a chance to know them off the court. And I think it gave us a big boost uh, uh, to start the season off. You know, Tom, a lot of teams take trips overseas, but to get it in your first year is a real bonus. I and think. you and I and the entire crew, we bonded last night, a little male bonding last night also, didn't we? Yeah, but not in Europe. We <laughs> tried that in the offseason. We did it in Tulsa. Inside, Thompson has a shot blocked, and a scramble for the rebound. They're going to call traveling on Ray Poindexter of Tulsa, meaning Bradley has 6.6 .6 seconds left to get a shot off, trailing by 10. Plenty of time out here, and they're going to get Zobris, and that's a smart move because what you're going to get, basically, is Parker driving the ball up the floor with the option of dishing off to Zobris or taking it to the rack completely. This is right. Right may have to crank it up here. This is off to Jackson, who misses the shot on the baseline. Deion Jackson not able to get it down. And they was tipped in, but the basket will be disallowed. So we're at halftime. And at halftime, Tulsa, who has had outstanding defense, leads Bradley by 10 at half. Missouri Valley Conference basketball is brought to you by TWA. We're up to something good. By Budweiser, the king of beers, who reminds you friends know when to say when. And by State Farm. Like a good neighbor. We're at halftime. The Tulsa Golden Hurricane lead the Bradley Braves by a score of 36 to 26. Chase Seals only with four points in the first half. Anthony Parker only with five. Mitch Holtis here along with Tom Kosich. Tulsa outstanding defense. They were switching defenses, taking the passing lane away. Bradley frustrated a little bit. You know what? I thought it was amazing in the first half as Tulsa's pressure really took great effect early. They got a stint there where they had five consecutive steals but didn't close the deal. And by not closing the deal, Bradley kept their head defensively, kept this game close. It's a 10-point deficit at halftime. Let's not forget, two weeks ago in Peoria, the Braves found themselves down by 17 and found a way to come back and win that one. Well, this game isn't far from being a 20-point game. 
but you mentioned Tulsa not able to finish after those fields, and Bradley was able to keep its wits. They didn't panic like maybe they panicked on Thursday night against Wichita State. But what I think Jimmy Molinari is going to do at halftime with the Braves is, one, really talk about that 1-3-1 one, one zone that Tulsa is executing out there because Bradley just has not been comfortable going against it. They haven't been able to find the seams, find the openings. They're going to discuss that, and also they must take care of the basketball better. Steve Robinson, I think, has got to be very happy. They've had several cracks, and let's not forget early also, the big fellows had four or five cracks in the paint. They weren't able to finish either. I think it would be a completely different ball game if they would have converted. Tulsa leads by 10 at halftime. One of the great features of our halftimes here on Prime with the Missouri Valley Conference is our Missouri Valley Conference moment. A graduate of Uluga High School leads to maintain the Great Moments in Missouri Valley Conference history is sponsored by Gatorade. Tubby Smith and the Golden Hurricane of Tulsa were just a little excited to find out that they would be a six seed in the 1995 NCAA tournament. A 12 seed the year before, Tulsa would need this Pooh Williamson three that turned into a four-point play as Tulsa knocked off the Big Ten's fighting Illini of Illinois. But in the second round, Shea Seal slammed in 31 points to lead Tulsa to a 12-point win over a 1995 Cinderella, the Old Dominion Monarchs. That performance sealed a sweet MVC moment as Tulsa battled its way back to the Sweet 16 for the second year in a row. He's only a freshman, but Rodney Buford is leading the Jays to a huge turnaround in 1995-96. This unanimous Missouri Valley Player of the Week averaged over 24 points, three rebounds and two assists in three contests last week. In games against Illinois State, Southern Illinois, and Indiana State, the 6'5 swingman scored 74 points, including a career-high 36 against the Redbirds, which tied a Creighton freshman record held by Benoit Benjamin. Rodney Buford a young force for an improving group of Blue Jays. For the Missouri Valley Conference, I'm John Glenn. Tulsa. Tulsa has used 15 bench points for its 36-point total to lead the Braves by 10 at halftime. We'll have more from the Valley and Prime after this. Missouri Valley Conference. The Missouri Valley Conference regular season winds down and schools jockey for position for the upcoming conference tournament in St. Louis. Five players now enter their games as members of their school's 1,000-point club, and four of the five are juniors. Three of them you're watching today. Bradley's Deion Jackson, the lone senior of the group, and junior guard Anthony Parker of Bradley, and Tulsa's Shea Seals. Newest members of the elite group, both juniors, Drake's Lenrick Rogers, and just this last week, Northern Iowa's Jason Daisy. The Panthers' Daisy has come into his own this season for Eldon Miller. The 6'3 Minneapolis native has unlimited range and very good off the dribble. Dawson, Georgia guard Lenrick Rogers joined the club earlier this year and has been a constant for Rudy Washington and Drake. Averaging 18.1 as a sophomore, he can create a shot or hit the three off the slightest screen. Tulsa Shea Seals came into the week the Valley's leading active scorer. The 6'5 Tulsa native is strong and can take the ball to the basket and is known for his three-point plays either inside or out. He has a chance to be TU's all-time leading scorer. Bradley has two thousand-point performers. Deion Jackson was freshman of the year his initial season and has been steady for Jim Molinari for four years. And his teammate, Naperville, Illinois' Anthony Parker, entered the thousand-point club a month ago. The 6'6 junior has been in the top ten in all nine offensive categories most of the season. Daisy, Seals, Parker, Jackson, and Rogers. 1,000-point plus performers. And in St. Louis at the Valley Tournament, you can see them all in one day. For the Missouri Valley Conference Network, this is Dave Snell reporting. AT&T presents an in Tulsa, Oklahoma. The Golden Hurricane lead the Bradley Braves by a score of 36 to 26. Now, back in the 30s here in Oklahoma, Bonnie and Clyde had a bunch of steals. Well, Tulsa had a load of steals in the first half time. Yeah, they've had great success with that 1-3-1 one, one pressured zone there. You see it right there, getting great extension. This time, though, in the man, the man. And let's watch what happens, because this is great help defense. They get the steal. Here comes Love. But this has been a problem throughout this afternoon. Lay it up off the backboard. Love had a great Great first half, seven points, two rebounds, but unfortunately unable to finish. Now here we go with the 1-3-1 zone. 
Oh, back to man. Here comes Parker. Dump down pass to Funches. Now watch the help, which comes with Ruffin here. Ruffin, get that on out of there. And once again, another Tulsa transition opportunity as they come down. And that's really what's been the big key for the first half for the Golden Hurricane as we go into the stats. Let's quickly go to the first half stats. A presentation of Old El Paso. All right, as we take a look at it, both ball clubs awfully cold from the field, getting to the free throw line the same way. Rebounds pretty even. Turnovers, though, the big area. Eight steals for Tulsa in the first half, just unable to convert. Both teams love defense, and the old El Paso stats certainly reflect that. But Tulsa leads by 10 at halftime. The second 20 minutes are yours following these messages. Second half, Jim Molinari hard at work trying to get something figured out for his Bradley team. A lot of balance and scoring in this ballgame time. You know, amazing thing you see, though, a couple of the great scorers in the Missouri Valley Conference basically absent. Parker with five points, but just two for five from the field, 0 for two from behind the arc. Shea Seals, the same thing, two for seven, 0 for four from behind the arc. Look out for the second half. These guys are both way too good of scorers. Good things are going to happen. Shea Seals only with four. Now you look at Anthony Parker. Only with five in the first half. Again, 15 players scored. So the points scored were meted out among about everybody on the floor. Billy Wright had a chance to go underneath, dribbled the ball off his foot, into trouble, and into Shea Seals. And another steal for the Golden Hurricane. to come out of the locker room, set a tone, what they're going to do both offensively and defensively. I know Bradley would like to get off a lot quicker here in the second half, and that's a great way to get started. Offensive foul on Rod Thompson. Tulsa. Let's take a look at the replay. The second charge taken in this game for Adebayo Akinkala. Well, I'll tell you what, Bayou Akinkala, I'll tell you, he is playing a whale of a game here. I mean, he has been a major factor. The Bradley people telling us that whatever he gives you is going to be extra, but he has been a big, big factor so far in this ballgame. And again, if you joined us late, Chad Klein, who's been a fifth-year senior this year for Bradley, and 20-2 and two is Bradley's record when Klein scores at least three buckets is out today with a knee injury, meaning Akinkala becomes even more important. Jackson with an air ball from the free throw line area and Tulsa back with a 10-point lead. Rough and good left-handed turn in the lane. Oh, do I love to watch that. The youngster <laughs> understands how to use the left hand. So many of these kids nowadays, Mitch, they just don't even think they have a left hand. Nice baby hook there by Ruffin. Ruffin with seven. You realize as a freshman, he's 3.5 GPA in engineering here. And he's the whole package. Well, they wouldn't even let me in the engineering building when I was in college, let alone major in that, Mitch. Calcula what? <laughs> you got to take math for that subject for, for that degree. <laughs> Anthony Parker. It's his first bucket of the second half. He has seven for the game and keeps Bradley within 10. Well, they keep looking for that back screen, but Bradley's not going to give it to him on the secondary break. They're going to sag down, give him the perimeter jumper, but nothing cheap inside. How about this matchup? Seals and Parker. One of them's going to get hot in the second half. Trust me. Oh, there's Ruffin underneath. He gets stripped because of a good look by Dwayne Bonner. And I'll tell you what. Tulsa's players, the perimeter people, they keep their head up and recognize down low so well. And that's a great catch inside for Ruffin. You know, the big guys inside, when they get those low passes down around the ankle, aren't always able to pick it up, but he's so silky smooth out there. Steve Robinson telling us last night, you know, they had a dilemma. They knew he was talented, knew he was good, but they wanted to be careful not to rush him, rush the freshman too early. But the heck with that, that's gone out the window here in the month of February. Nice day at the line from... Michael Ruffin, who is now six of seven at the strike. Eight points for Ruffin, just coming off his season and career high of 13 points against Southern Illinois on Wednesday night in Carbondale. This guy's third in the league in block shots. That's a second foul line miss of the game. 11 point lead for Tulsa. Thirty nine twenty eight is the score here at the Convention Center Arena and now there's a pushing foul Zobris was setting a foul there have been a bunch of off the ball fouls called against Tulsa in this game it's on Shea Seals 
And another player who's been awfully quiet in the first half, Billy Wright, hasn't really created much for his ball club. As we talked about, such a playmaking guard out there among the best in the league. Let me make a correction, Tom. Dwayne Bonner was called for the foul and not Shea Seals. Kinkalai trying to get something done against a triple team. Rescued by Zobris. Parker from the half moon. Oh. Count it. I'll tell you what. Yeah, you're going to say Anthony Parker, great shot. But Matt Zobris, unbelievable. Aaron Zobris, unbelievable job setting the screen that time. And Bradley showing good offensive patience. First player in the game to get to double digits.